Wow, I'm so much blessed today with our father, Apostle Mio Saititi, on the spirit of poverty. This blessed my life so much, and I hope it will do so to you. All right, over to you, sir. It must come to you as a revelation that you are insufficient. That, that perpetual impression of the fact that you are insufficient is what qualifies you for the supply of the grace of God. You see, the kingdom of God, the grace of God, the ability of God, that which is the energy that is in the Holy Ghost is not made available to you until you come to that state of poverty in spirit. And so when God appeared to Abraham, he said, I am the El Shaddai. Maybe we may need to go that there so that you will understand poverty of spirit. I am the El Shaddai. Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. So on my script here, I says poverty of, of spirit is acknowledging our inadequacy. That's how God created you. All right? And that's the simplest way I can put it. In order for me to come up with this conclusion, I had consulted several Bible authorities on the subject matter. I had consulted uh, scholars on this matter. And all the scholars have the same position. And this is the position that the scholars, I mean scholars across generations, scholars across board, their understanding of poverty of spirit is the same even in the 17th century in the 15th century in the 14th century in the in the 10th century poverty of spirit is an acknowledgement of our spiritual inadequacy inadequacy jump with me let's go to the book of revelation quickly and establish this i think it's revelation chapter 17 when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the El Shaddai. That almighty God there is El Shaddai. Now, the, the concept of the almighty is the same concept of the all-sufficient. Uh, this concept is the concept of the God that sustains the God that supports all. How many of you have been in a situation before you had no money in your pocket, but you didn't die? You've been there. So, so now you know that the fact that you don't have money in your pocket has nothing to do with your survival. It's because you are beginning to understand this El Shaddai. It's the all sufficient. It's the one that sustains all, but yet is sustained by none. And he came and introduced himself to Abraham in this wise. There were so many issues in the life of Abraham that needed a superior hand to attend to. Part of the issues here, and it took three generations for God to register his identity as the El Shaddai. And you must understand that the El Shaddai is the all-sufficient one. And it will take a man of poverty of spirit to tap into the resources that are available in the person of the El Shaddai. So we don't have a problem with God. God is all sufficient. But whether or not you are supplied for is whether you have, you have accepted the challenge because there's a challenge here. He said, walk thou before me and be thou perfect. The context in which walk thou before me and be thou perfect exists is the context of the El Shaddai. I'm going to throw a quiz, a quiz uh, to this congregation and we'll see how much your walk before him has been. Uh, are, you, are you with me? Say, I'm the El Shaddai. Walk down before me and be that perfect. Okay. Let us analyze that statement a little more. Uh, if he's saying that he's the all-sufficient one, and one of the major issues in the life of Abraham was that his wife was barren. And there was nothing that Abraham could do about that condition. In fact, in Abraham's case, the major case 
where the El Shaddai manifested his capacity was in his wife's barrenness. In the case of Isaac, it was a situation of famine. In the case of Jacob, it was a situation of poverty. It took three years, three generations to register his identity as El Shaddai and to prove that he was all sufficient. Part of this reason for the symptoms of the barrenness of his wife was the defiance of Abraham against the altar he served, his family. I've read um, Bible history and ancient history, and I realized that the, Abraham's family was dedicated to the service of a certain spirit uh, called sin in all of the Chaldees. And when Abraham began to hear the voice of God, and that voice was trapped in his head, and he decided to respond to the voice. In fact, I have evidence to show that the father, Abraham's dad, felt he was mad. I have so much evidence to show on that, but that's not my emphasis. Now, this man decided to obey the voice of God. It took a lot of time. Abraham was actually called at the age of 25 because of his father's influence. His father helped him waste 50 years out of his life. So God now killed the father to give Abraham the opportunity to respond to the calling. And that's why Abraham responded to the calling at the age of 75. The father helping him to waste 50 years in Haran. I don't want to go into all of those details. Now that Abraham was going to go for the calling, there was a prescription of compliance. Get thee out of thy country, get thee out of thy kindred, get thee out of thy father's house, and into the land that I will show you. And Abraham's family was dedicated to the service of that fertility spirit. And the evidence that Abraham's defiance was registered by the spirit was the barrenness of his wife. Because any time, the fertility spirit is the one that guarantees fruitfulness either in the fruit of the body or in the fruit of the ground. And those of you that are in typical agrarian communities can, I think you know what fertility spirits are. There are some charms when they put it in the farm, your produce, their produce will begin to... Titus, you have, not, you have not heard of that? You have heard of it? Okay. That's a fertility spirit. It, 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 they revere it, they worship it because of its potential agricultural prosperity. And so when Abraham defied that fertility spirit, part of the evidences of the defiance was the barrenness of his wife. And when such things happen, it is irreversible. And then God now shows up and says, I'm the Ashura. But you must walk down before me and be perfect according to the revelation I've given to you as the Ashura. If I am the strong and the multi-breasted and the one that sustains all and I'm the one that, that, that is sustained by none, you will need to walk in the light of that revelation until you are perfect in it. Unfortunately, Abraham got busy. Even though God had given him his solemn oath, a covenant was caught, Abraham got busy and he felt the way to help Eshadai was to make children to Hagar. It was obvious that Hagar was not the one that was cursed. And so she was able to conceive. And uh, Abraham was feeling that he has made a great achievement. And God now appeared to him again and told him that well, I, it's obvious you didn't understand what I'm saying because at that time, his work before the El Shaddai was not perfect. He was still trying to help the El Shaddai. And El Shaddai is saying, I'm the one that is the strong and the one that sustains all and is sustained by none. The being perfect that God is requiring from Abraham there is poverty of spirit. To acknowledge his inadequacy, as long as Abraham had not come to that point, he was still in the business of attempting to help God. And the power and the potential that came to him through God's visitation could not be tapped, could not be appropriated. Maybe there are people in this place today and you have been trying to help God in situations that you are utterly helpless, but you are still very active. The sister told me the other day that he's sure that this brother is the one that is meant for her. And she went and proposed to him. 
is <laughs> is when she had proposed and the brother actually thought he was insane while well, I had the mental his mental situation that she now ran back and came to me that I should come and help mend the whole you what what are we doing what are we? you have not your work is not perfect so the, the young man thought the lady was insane and he ran to me instantly and said he met someone there is a, an issue of insanity but me I know the story from the other side I, that's what happens when we don't allow the extra diet to go to work. Because we believe the extra diet is incapable, he's slow, he doesn't understand your biological time clock. And he said you need to walk before him with the revelation of El Shaddai and be perfect. The perfection of that revelation is that you eventually become poor in spirit. You acknowledge your inadequacy and you give him the opportunity to be God. You see, that's the first ground of our work of faith, being able to relate with him. There's, oh my God, I, I, hallelujah, hallelujah. It, it, the way you are responding is as if you have, all of you here have, have been helping God. You have been helping God. You have been helping him. So Abraham got busy. It's all right. Is it not to get a child? Okay. There's an inheritance for me. No problem. And he got busy and it was the wife that recommended. And you know all the politics that took place. And God rejected all of that filthy process in trying to bring his counsel to pass. Abraham's work with God was not yet perfect because he had not yet come to the point of poverty of spirit. So God waited for him. And you know when God is waiting... You are the one that doesn't have time. God has eternity. So when we say God is waiting, he's, he's waiting. So he waited for him and Sarah slept into menopause. He waited for him and his own natural force, his body had died. And there was nothing that Abraham could do again within the scope of his own ability to change anything whatsoever. That's when God now showed up. That's the time that he was able to achieve poverty of spirit. You are not with me. The kingdom of God is real. Everything that God says in the Bible is real. It's true. But not every one of us will experience everything that God has said. Even the ones he said concerning you, it doesn't mean you will experience everything. It's the extent to which you exercise your poverty. The moment I got this, this is the golden revelation that changed my life. I tell you the truth, I know how to extract from God. I know how to draw from God. I know how to, I know it. I know it. I know it. And there are several scriptures in the Bible that are suggestive of this posture of poverty of spirit. You hear scriptures that say it's not by power. It's not by mind. It's by what? So the spirit of God is the all-sufficient one. Don't think your power can achieve anything. The Bible says that God doesn't need the strength of an ox or the legs of a man.